Hello guys, this is Commando Doggo and as promised I'm releasing this blueprint. It's a free blueprint, it'll be in the top of the description and it's just a free module kit that you can use when building your ships. Um, so yeah, it's not uh, for complete beginners. Some of the modules are quite advanced but I'll show you anyway and you might be able to use them regardless. So first off I've got the working benches, all free working benches. But uh, rather than waste your time trying to find all the individual bits, I've got it all pre-bolted, it's already on. So these free working benches have everything already on it. So you just grab that, copy paste into your ship build, and then you've got all the benches that you need. Uh, and I've also got a button as well. So in case you don't know how buttons work, I've got a pre-assembled button. So all you have to do is nail that on somewhere, give it power, and now you've got two buttons. And uh, the button mode is already on, the button style is already on one, so it's a toggle button. I've got pre-assembled, what's this called again? Whatever this is called, I can't remember. But it's pre-assembled anyway, it's a respawn point that you can use to respawn on your ship. It's quite expensive, it's for advanced ship builders really, or big ships. And, uh, and I've got pre-assembled cargo module here. So for new players, uh, they tend to auto-bolt all their cargo crates, but if you're building big ships, that's a bad idea. Because not only does the auto bolt just get things wrong sometimes, but they use way too many bolts. You do not need to bolt every crate together through every gap. It's it's way too many excessive amount of bolts, and you'll run out of bolts quickly on your building budget. Um, <clears throat> you'll run out of your budget pretty quickly if you auto bolt everything. You won't be able to build very big ships if you keep at that. So best habit is to manually bolt and try and get at least five bolts per crate. I use five bolts. Some people can do four bolts because if you spread your bolts out quite far, then you can use less bolts and it'll still have good durability. But five bolts spread out on one side is kind of the minimum you need for it to be have good durability even when it's at maximum mass. And I prefer to do five bolts on one side because if you're in a PVP ship, let's say you want to protect yourself, if you've got maximum weight in your cargo crate and you've got five bolts on one side neatly tucked away here, then that means whoever's shooting at you has to go through this crate first before they can break your beams and your bolts and everything else. So that's just how I do it. So you can copy paste that and use that. It's all pre-bolted with the, uh, which I think uh, is the minimum required amount of bolts. And then next I have a little thruster away here, tier two thrusters. And it's already got the ducts on, it's all set up, ready to go. You just plug it into the sides. Uh, and for those who don't know, you only need ducts touching the back of the hard points and that will pass pipes and power through. So that's all good. And uh, I've pre-assembled this as well. I think that's all bolted correctly. And I have a pre-assembled plasma thruster here with a few extra rings. Uh, so I'm not an expert on plasma thrusters. I I've never really put it into a ship before, but uh, but I have tried once and I'm sure someone could assemble it better but I found it a real nuisance getting all the right beams and bolting it together manually because the auto bolt doesn't do well with this either. So that's already pre-assembled for you, you just plug that in, you've got a nice medium sized plasma thruster if you want to build a big ship. And then next up I've pre-assembled the jet large generator parts. So personally I've never used a large generator on my ship, I've only had a look at them. But they were a real nuisance again, there was no tutorial and they were a real nuisance to uh, assemble, so I've assembled it all for you. So it comes in many different bits and it comes in three parts. You've got the Exorium processing unit and you've got something else, I can't even remember what this is, large generator. And the Exorium tank, so that's all pre-assembled, you just plug that in. I think they have to slot together as well. But yeah, once you've done that you just plug it in and that should work. And next up, just a couple of target dummies here. And here are your heat sinks, the three different types. Here's some pre-assembled radiators, they're already bolted together. You just need to add hard points to the end. And we have what I use in every large ship that I make. Now I know large miners and large haulers that want to go long distance use even more than this. But for me, six is enough. Uh, that will give you a good few hundred kilometers, maybe 500, I don't even know. Um, and basically, I have it named differently from the defaults. So I have it G1, G6, from G1 to G6. And what I have is a YOLO chip here, which just says propellant equals G1 plus G2 plus G3 plus all of them together. 
And basically that YOLO chip just adds them all together and goes onto this little display here of propellant. And this propellant is already set to the correct max value. So this is all set up. You just have to plug this YOLO chip in, put this on your control panel, and you've got six pre-set up uh, large tanks that will show correctly on the display here. So that's if you want to build a, a large ship, you've got six of these. And next I've got batteries here um, with how I name them. So you can name them differently, this is just how I name them. I name it power and then I have a display here called power and that's it. And then I've got some YOLO chips. I've got auto generator uh, YOLO here and a power save button which you can just press and it set a custom value so I have it set to 3 so when this button is pressed it will turn the power down to 3% um, for the generators here that is and then I've got auto gen which does the generators automatically so that uh, if it's past 90% full power then the generators go to zero and if the batteries run low lower than 90% then the generators go to full so you need a lot of batteries for that. You can you don't have to use the auto gen script. You can just use a power save button, simple tog on and off if you want to save power. Power, <coughs> excuse me. And I've got some other chips here as well that just run the auto generator skip a script. So you can just plug this in if you want. And I actually learned that quickly after Starbase Wiki because I've never really done an auto generator script after thousands of over a thousand hours so, of playing of designing. And here is my bread and butter generator circle that I made which I use in all my ships and um, you can use this too so basically it's just a, a circular style generator array that I created which is all bolted together and the reason why I made it circular and I gave little space in between is because when generators aren't touching each other they generate less heat so by giving them a tiny bit of space in this circular format they generate less heat and it also keeps it very dense um, so what you can do is plug this 34 generator circle into your ship and all you need to do to plug it in is just to connect this back plate here to your ship. That's it. Everything else is bolted together correctly. It's all bolted to this back plate. All you need to do is just slot this black back plate into your ship, connect it with beams on the top and bottom or whatever, left to right, doesn't matter. And once you've done that you have a pre-built tier 2 34 generator circle and it's only two generators per per uh, fuel chamber just so you have uh, more fuel for the amount of time so it lasts a while <clears throat> and if you need more power you can just very simply add enhancers on top of some of these generators or you can simply if you're building a very big ship and you don't want to use the large expensive generator setup you can just copy paste back to back there you go, you've got two of these big generator arrays and you just connect them to the beams, all preset for you, put this in the center of your ship and you've got a lot of power generation, you've got 68 generators. So it's still not as good as one large generator but pretty much all my ships don't need more than that. You can have a large mining ship with many weapons and thrusters with two of these or you could have a large fighter, a very large fighter with just one of these, so that's for you. And here we have uh, a mining drill that I created, which I pretty much use on all my mining ships now. I just very simple copy paste, put down in front of my ship, and the robot arm will spin in a circle, and this will mine in a circle and drill a hole straight through any large asteroid that you point to that. And I've got a uh, YOLO code for that. Pretty simple, you know, I'm not an expert mining ship builder. I know other people have built much better scripts. It's just a very simple button on and off, simple YOLO, point and click, spin round, mine an asteroid. Uh, and all of these are facing a few degrees down, so they all merge together into one laser. Okay, and they just spin around at the asteroid. And then here we have some pre-built seats for you, which can move some moving seats. So this one rotates the seat, uh, it has levers on the sides that you can rename which are all connected to the ducts and you have uh, a control panel again just rename all the buttons to whatever you want. This is just copy pasted from one of my ships and the actual seat can rotate as well so it's all connected through the bottom of the seat. 
So if you, the reason why I make moving seats like this is because if you have a very tight small cockpit then using this seat um, you can exit by just turning it around because um, otherwise if your cockpit is too tight then you can't escape and you can't leave the seat normally. Well use one of these turning seats and you can just simply spin the seat around and you can leave. Uh, and I've got the same thing here but it's a pitch seat so it's connected to just go pitch down instead of rotate. So you can use these seats for your ships. And then lastly I've got some stacked uh, turntable it's here and it's basically just a, a turntable setup that you can use if you want to move larger heavier objects on your ships because I know turntables on this games are very um, flimsy they don't they can't really move stuff heavy stuff when your ship is maneuvering and turning but if you stack turntables together and you connect them to one object and you connect these turntables to your ship then it actually increases the rotation power and the force that it pushes the object so that you can uh, move heavier objects um, on your ship while at the same time it's more resistant to movement inertia as well so if your ship is spinning around and maneuvering if you just had one turntable moving something it's just going to spin out of control uh, and break or whatever but if you've got multiple turntables pushing something then it's more stable it's more resistant to inertia um, it's still very glitchy though if you use multiple turntables on a ship um, you have to host that ship at all times because if you leave that ship then it usually just falls apart all the turntables so that's one problem with using multiple turntables and, uh, and if you are going to use multiple turntables and you are going to leave your ship at some point I think your best bet is to just reset everything to the default position before you leave your ship anywhere and maybe it will be okay when you return but generally when you build ships that use large turntable structures like this to move heavy objects it breaks apart very easily with all the moving objects if you lose host of your ship so that's if your ship enters that blurry LOD state because you leave it too far away so just keep that in mind if you're going to build a ship that uses large moving parts and uses these robot arms here and these stacked turntable setups I got for you then you just need to make sure that you're hosting the ship and you don't leave your ship too far because it will most likely just kind of break once you leave it and lastly I've got a small tiny little ship here um, it's not a very good ship it's something I made quick, uh, quickly to see how small I can make a ship you know I'm not the best designer when it comes to small ships it's something I want to get better at in the future I do want to design small fighters and see how I can do but anyway if you're a new ship builder and you want to know how to build a ship then this basically just has the bare minimum of everything that you need it's just got a simple small hydrogen tank a few generators a few heat sinks, a few radiators, a few maneuver thrusters and the cockpit with all the buttons and levers so it's basically just a very simple small condensed ship with all the minimum requirement stuff that you need I know it's quite complicated for a beginner, beginner designer but uh, after you've built your first small few test ships you do get used to it and it is kind of tedious and difficult at first but once you've built a few ships it becomes fun and, uh, and once you overcome that barrier, that initial learning curve, everything starts to become fun. You can start experimenting, you can start doing weird stuff. Uh, you can start learning basic YOLO, which again, basic YOLO doesn't require much. Um, I remember <clears throat> when I first started doing YOLO, it only took me like one day to make some basic YOLO scripts and do some really cool stuff, so don't be discouraged. Um, so yeah, so most of these modules are for uh, slightly more advanced builders, intermediates or advanced, but if you're a beginner you can use these as well, just copy paste. Um, I hope this was useful and thanks for watching.